Hello, and welcome to the Spotlight on Exact Path Pedagogy. I'm Leslie Fox, a K-8 Senior Learning Designer. I'm here to show you two stellar examples of math pedagogy from our July and October Exact Path releases. Today, we'll review the learning design principles from the Exact Path Learning Design and Research Brief, and I will walk through a couple of math examples. You're probably already familiar with the six research-based learning design principles on which ExactPath is based. The pedagogy I'll be highlighting today aligns with math best practices. Research confirms that students understand more when they are presented with a variety of models and representations, progressing from concrete to pictorial to abstract. Something Fishy, a grade five module released in July, is a great example of using this approach to demonstrate how to multiply whole numbers by fractions. As a bonus, it uses the Nebula Academy setting and characters to keep students engaged. Since this is a digital product, there is nothing concrete for the students to do. In other words, they don't physically manipulate anything on their own. But the animation in this module gives a hands-on feel for how to multiply one-fourth by seven. Let's take a look. We can use seven squares to represent the seven bags of fish food. We need to feed the fish one-fourth of the bags. So let's split each square into fourths. That's it. Then we shade one-fourth of each square. This model shows one-fourth times seven. I see it! Now, when we combine the shaded portions from each bag of food, we can see how many bags of food we should feed the fish today. Nice work! One-fourth of seven is seven-fourths. Four-fourths is a whole, so seven-fourths is the same as one and three-fourths. We need to feed the fish one and three-fourths bags of fish food. Not only is this pedagogically sound, but I think teachers and students will love it. Next, we connect a pictorial model to an abstract representation to multiply a whole number by a fraction. Since two-fifths of the fish are angelfish, we can shade two-fifths of each rectangle. Wow! That's a lot of shaded parts. Should we try to count them all? Well... Let's think about this. We know that two parts are shaded on each rectangle, and there are 15 rectangles. 2 times 15 is 30, so we have 30 shaded parts in all. Good thinking. Each part represents a fifth, so we have 30 fifths. I know that 5 fifths is a whole, so I'll put the shaded parts into groups of 5 fifths. That's six holes. This model shows that two-fifths of 15 is six. Building a strong conceptual understanding, in other words, what is really happening here versus jumping right into, here's how to multiply a whole number by a fraction, aids academic recovery. Not to sound like a broken record, does that analogy even make sense anymore? But using a variety of representations to present math concepts can deepen understanding for students. Something fishy goes on to show how to use a number line to multiply a whole number by a fraction. Start at zero. Here is one jump of three sixths. Two jumps of three sixths. Three jumps. Four jumps. Five jumps. This number line shows five groups of three-sixths. So, we can see that five times three-sixths equals fifteen-sixths. That's right. We also see the jumps landed three tick marks past two. So, fifteen-sixths is the same as two and three-sixths. Cool. Finally, students are presented with the abstract representation without any models. To find the product of two-thirds times six, multiply the numerator two by the whole number six, 
and then divide that product by the denominator three to get the answer. Two thirds times six is the same as two times six divided by three, which equals four. Scaffolding makes it easy for teachers to help their students move from concrete to abstract. Worth noting is that research supports the effectiveness of the concrete representational abstract progression of math instruction. In 2017, researchers found that students experiencing instruction along this progression are best able to develop the skills for mental and symbolic mathematics. Another fundamental foundation for math instruction is reasoning and problem solving. The new grade three module, Words to the Wise, walks students through a variation of Paglia's four-step problem solving model, which was introduced in 1957 and is still relevant today. Here we have Edmentum's steps to solving a word problem. Let's see how they align with Paglia's steps. We've split Paglia's first step, understand the problem, into two, read and find. Teachers and students will appreciate the extra little bit of direction here. Notice that we highlight the important information and underline the question that needs to be answered in the find step. Next, we plan how to solve the problem. In this case, we've decided to draw a picture to help write an equation. After a plan is in place, it's time to solve the equation to answer the question. And it's always a good idea to check the answer for reasonableness. We consistently use the same problem solving steps so that they eventually become second nature. Read, find important information, plan, solve, and check. Fun fact for teachers who are familiar with the problem solving model but may not know, this stepped out approach has been shown to positively affect learning outcomes in low and moderate achieving students.